Hey guys, it's Erica, and I have, I think, pretty sure all of my Sansevierias over here because today we're talking Sansevierias. So, Sansevierias, commonly known as snake plants, mother in law's tongue. There are so many names for Sansevierias. We're just gonna go with snake plants for this video. Snake plants are one of the most common plants, in my opinion, probably because they are so easy to care for. I don't think I've ever had a snake plant die on me and I'm pretty sure the only ways to kill this plant are to overwater them and leave them in direct sunlight without kind of slowly transferring them to be in that highlight situation. Snake plants can live in the darkest rooms, they can live in the brightest rooms, they're just such an, such an adaptable plant. Now there are a lot of different kinds of snake plants so in order to cut some time down we're gonna go over the most common ones that you will see in stores whether it be a nursery or your local home depot or lowe's these are snake plants that you will probably run into during your plant shopping time i've actually cut this list down to eight plants so we're gonna get started I'm just gonna grab random plants from here. We're not going in any particular order. The first plant nearest to me is a Sansevieria Arenbergii, um, commonly known as a Samurai Dwarf. And this is a really funky looking plant and I have included <laughs> this plant in this video because I bought this plant at Home Depot. Actually, this is from Lowe's for $10, which is a great price for this plant. This is a really big one. They're usually kind of smaller. When I bought this one, it was actually in some, it was in some glued down stone. So I just removed it from there and now it's happily growing here. You know, all of these plants are so low maintenance and carefree that I'm probably not even gonna talk about how easy each plant is. I'm just gonna let you know where I'm keeping them in my home. So this plant I keep actually under my grow lights. So he gets grow lights every day. I honestly do not water my snake plants very often, just kind of whenever I remember or when their leaves start to look a little bit wrinkled. And this little guy is no exception, except he doesn't really get wrinkled leaves so much. It's more of just his soil has been really dried out for a long time. If you want to be a very good plant parent, I would say watering whenever the soil dries out or even waiting a little, like, couple days after your com soil is completely dried out is good for this plant. Um, there's a common misconception, I think, that snake plants don't really ever need to be watered. And they do like to be watered. You can water them however long it takes for their soil to dry out. So that could be once a week, once every two weeks. It's all dependent on the light situation you're giving it, the humidity in the room, your pot, the soil that you give your plant. It all boils down to the environmental factors you give your plant that cause the soil to dry out in a certain amount of time. Pretty much <laughs> summing it all up, just water it when your soil is dry. And if you're nervous for giving this plant root rot, just wait a couple days after you notice your soil is completely dry and your plant should be good to go. So there we go. Plant number one, a samurai snake plant. Next plant we're gonna go for is this guy who is in all my videos. <laughs> this is a Sansevieria zeylanica. It is pretty much, there's a yellow snake plant back there if you can see it. It has yellow edgings and this is pretty much that plant without the yellow edgings. So I really love this one because when I first started getting into snake plants, I honestly did not like the plant with the yellow edges. I didn't like the yellow edges at all. I thought they were kind of ugly to be quite honest, but you know, it grew on me as most plants do. I keep this guy in this room. It pretty much doesn't have any windows where light reaches back here. So the sky only gets light from the grow lights that shine on the edge. And before I got the grow lights, it was still kind of bright outside. It was still summertime. So I have a north facing window and light kind of had to reach really far back in order to get to this plant. But that's what it lived with and it's been doing fine. The next plant I have here is called a honey and 
pretty much honeys are just really small snake plants. This one looks like a zeylanica. It has the same coloration. This is how a snake plant looks when it's very dehydrated. You can see these limbs are super bendable and flimsy. You can see how there's kind of creasing going on here. And once I give it water, it's going to fill up with all that moisture and it's going to become turgid. It's going to become stiff and full with water. So this is how your plant looks when it desperately needs water. This is such an adorable plant just to keep, you know, maybe on your desk or something. It's going to stay small and I forgot to mention that these plants also do well in office settings because they will grow from the fluorescent lights. My next plant that I have here is a Sansevieria moonshine. First time I ever saw this plant was on, of course, Instagram and it is such a beautiful light color. When I saw it in store, I had to pick it up. It's such a nice contrast to all the other dark colors of the other snake plants that I have. So that is what I adore this plant for. This plant I keep outside on my east facing porch and it's doing pretty well out there. It's that morning sunlight, so it's very happy. It just has these beautiful dark green edges and this really light green interior and that is why I love this plant so much. You guys were probably waiting for this one to come because this is probably the most hyped Sansevieria there is and this is a whale fin Sansevieria, Sansevieria masoniana and I also did a video on this plant <laughs> when I first started my channel and this is what became of this little stem that I forgot to film potting it and three little babies came out of all those rhizomes. I love this plant. So many people love this plant. There is a really awesome, very variegated version out there, but I, the cost of it is probably ridiculous. So this is good enough for me. It has these gorgeous flat leaves, which is probably how it got its name, whale fin. And it has this beautiful brown trim and the leaves kind of look like scales maybe or like the pattern of water when the sun reflects it onto the ocean floor or even in a pool and it is just such a beautiful beautiful snake plant this is the last of the snake plants that i own that i'm going to be talking about today this is just your common sansevieria laurentii and this is probably the most common snake plant out there. If you think of a snake plant, this is probably the image that pops into your head. I used to not really like how these yellow edges were, but I liked the interior, which is why I ended up getting that guy over there. And it's pretty much grown on me. I found this plant, it was kind of thrown away as if it was a weed. So I picked it up and I potted it and it has really come back to life because you guys would be amazed at how it looked when I first got it. And that is why <laughs> one of its leaves are ripped in half. And this plant has just, this plant has just come a long way from where it first started out. And that's why I love it so much. And I'm really proud of this plant because and, you know, I, I kind of saved its life. <laughs> but, um, yes, this is a classic Sansevieria. And this is kind of maybe the, sans the snake plant that you think of for minimalist furniture. Like, there will be one standalone snake plant as a decor piece. And <laughs> it's probably because it's such a structured and sculptural plant. Yeah, it's definitely grown on me. These next few plants I do not own, but I do have a lot of footage to pull from, so I will be showing images on screen. Um, the first one I want to talk about is a Bantle Sensation. That is probably my most wanted Sansevieria. I would love to purchase this plant and own it because it has these beautiful striped leaves. I think it's so, such a gorgeous plant. I love those white stripes. It has such a lovely variegation and I highly recommend this plant, although it is usually more costly than other snake plants. The next plant that I wanna talk about that I do not own is a Cylindrica. And this plant I have 
always thought is a, such a super cool snake plant because it has these amazing cylindrical leaves and I remember going to Lowe's and Home Depot and I will always admire that plant. Sometimes it's shaped like a mohawk, sometimes it's just going crazy, but it's a really fun plant and it's very different. A lot of the times when you see it, it will be kind of braided for some reason. They'll be sold as a braided plant, I guess, for decoration. <laughs> kind of like how a money tree is usually braided. That's how cylindricas come. Okay, guys, I believe those are, that's everything. I hope I didn't leave anything out. Um, I know there are so many more snake plants, but it would just take too long to mention them. And there's so many variations that it's kind of, it's kind of a lot. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. You can subscribe to my channel if you want for some more plant content. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Bye!